For those of you who were around last Sunday for the stream, you'll know that, that I installed Gentoo. Now, the first thing I should say about my week with Gentoo is that I'm very appreciative for all of my patrons who got me to the goal, which is the reason why I installed Gentoo in the first place. Especially Robert, I mean, especially everybody, but Robert paid like over $200 to get me to that goal. So everybody, thank you for supporting me. So the next thing I should say is that I'm still on Gentoo. Like I still have my Gentoo install and I can actually show you my Gentoo install right here. This is my Gentoo install. Ignore the, the lack of a wallpaper. It won't stay. Like I can't get my, I can't get fed to keep the wallpaper to stay after reboot. I don't know why. It's weird things are going on. Just trust me on that. So this is my Gentoo install. And you'll notice that I'm on DWM and not i3, which is uh, an interesting story, which I'm going to tell here in a few minutes. But I've used Gentoo now every day for the last week for several hours. Now, I have not lived in it full time simply because I had to get work done. <laughs> and until Gentoo gets to a certain point, you really can't do any work with it. And I didn't have enough time to just sit down for hours and hours on end to get everything working. A week later... I think I'm finally to the point where I could use Gen 2 full time if I wanted to. There are a few things here that are not working correctly yet, but I'll talk about those here in a few minutes. But I'm at the point now, a week later, where this is a fully functional system. It has all of my stuff on it, all my scripts are in the right place, everything, the, like the main stuff that I absolutely have to have is working. So. I have some thoughts about Gentoo. The first thing I should talk about is the overall experience. Now, for those of you who have never used Gentoo before or have never been successful installing Gentoo before, what makes Gentoo interesting is that it's a source-based distro. And what I mean by that is that everything you install has to be compiled by you. There are hardly any binaries that you, you install. Now, that's not completely true because there are binaries that you can use, things like the Firefox binary, the kernel binary, stuff like that. So you don't have to compile your own kernel or compile Firefox or whatever. But for the most part, if you install something, you're going to compile it. So for example, I installed Ranger. I had to compile it. I, I needed the Uberzug in order to get image previews. I had to compile it. I, I use EXA for my LS alias here. I had to compile it over and over and over again. That's what Gentoo is. Now, if that sounds exhausting to you, then you're not alone. But f you're probably wondering then what is the benefit of actually doing this? And the benefit it actually is pretty neat. It By compiling everything from source, by building everything yourself, it allows you to fine tune exactly how things are compiled. So for example, things like PyCom can be compiled without vSync support if you wanted to. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you could do that. You could compile OBS without NVENC support if you wanted to. There's a ton of different options for every program that you download. They're called use flags, and you can say, for instance, tell the system that you never want to see Pipewire ever. Like, you never want any package to install Pipewire as a dependency or anything like that, you, you can do that. And it ensures that Pipewire never touches your system. That's amazing. That is a really neat and very attractive reason to use Gentoo. And I'm gonna miss it when I use Arch again. So I'm just gonna put that out there. That's gonna be one of the reason things I miss when I move back to Arch or Argo. Outside of the compiling things from source, Really, the biggest thing about Gentoo is that it's very much like Arch, actually, in that you build everything together yourself. Every little piece, every little dependency is something that you have to put in there. And that's the reason why it's taken me a whole week to get the system up to the point where it's actually usable. There are so many little itsy-bitsy pieces that go into the ability to use like DWM or i3 you, that it just takes a while to get there. And you can be using your computer for a little while and then realize, oh, I need this thing, so I have to go run off and compile this thing. And then you'll use your computer for a little while longer and you'll realize that there's another dependency that you haven't installed yet and you have to run and install that one. And while on Arch, that's not a big deal. 
Usually it's just sudo pacman dash s whatever, and it takes five seconds to install. On Gen 2, it's a little bit different. Now, for the most part, the horror stories that you hear about four or five days of compiling stuff, most of that, at least in my experience, is complete nonsense. The longest compile session that I had was with Crusader, and that's a KDE application, so it had a ton of dependencies, and that took about 25 minutes. Now, I have really high-end hardware, so obviously if you are running this on a laptop or something where you don't have 64 gigabytes of RAM and a Ryzen 3800X, your compile times are obviously going to be a lot slower. But from my experience, the compile times had, weren't so bad that it would have that it proved annoying. But the problem is, is that still over time, as you install a whole bunch of stuff, that compile time does add up, and that means everything takes just a little bit longer to install, to update, whatever. It just takes a little bit longer. And honestly, there's nothing hugely wrong with that. For me personally, I didn't find it that egregious that things took a little bit longer. I just went and did something else while I was waiting for something to emerge. So let me talk about the good things. So I talked a little bit about the ability to use use flags and to compile software and packages without or with certain features. That's the number one reason that I like Gen 2. It's actually really cool. There are other reasons that I like Gen 2. The biggest one being I absolutely have adored my time here because I've learned so much. If you are interested in learning a lot about Linux, but you're not quite interested in going crazy and installing Linux from scratch, Gen 2 is a fantastic option for you because it is very complex, but at the same time, easy to learn, if I can say that. You can do a ton of stuff here and get a ton of information and just learn a lot. Now, one thing is for sure, though, is I would not do this alone. Like, I have had a lot of help. Ben from my Discord server has been there, and Zany's Discord server. Uh, uh, Z Tyler's been there uh, to help. Josh has been there to help. And without those three guys, I wouldn't have actually been able to even install Gen 2 on my own. At least without a whole bunch of trial and error. So I'm, I'm very appreciative of having help. So I highly recommend if you're going to try Gen 2, find someone that knows what, they have, what they're doing and ask them for help. But even beyond the help thing, I've learned a lot. Like, there's just a ton of stuff here that I've learned to do. And it's been a very rewarding experience. I've been able to create a system, basically from the ground up, that I'm proud of. I can come here, I can do actual work. I'm recording this video right now on Gen 2. If I could get my i3 configuration file to work, I was going to do a stream tonight from Gen 2. We're going to talk about the problems here in just a minute. But the point is, is that this is a fully functioning system, and I did it, right? I had help, but I'm very proud of the fact that I'm here. Like, I have all my configuration files here. I have all my junk here, and it works. Like, I could right now, minus a few things that are really pissing me off, use this system for the next month and be perfectly happy. And in fact, I've considered doing it. But let's go ahead and transition into the negative things. The first thing that pisses me off right now is that I can't get PyCom to work very well. So if you are familiar with PyCom at all, you'll know that one of the features of it will allow you to run it with a vSync flag that will, will take some of the screen tearing off from your system. For whatever reason, this computer here screen tears like a mofo. It's just a horrible thing with this combination of hardware that it, it just does it. And it doesn't matter what Linux distribution it is, like they all do it. It doesn't matter. Like as, usually the only place I note it is when I'm scrolling through like a web page, the screen tears and it drives me absolutely bonkers. I can't put up with it. It just ruins my, my day. It ruins my day. <laughs> so usually I can use PyCom to get rid of it. And when I can't use just PyCon to get rid of it, all of it, like sometimes it just takes off like the, the top 90% of the screen tearing and you could still notice it somewhat. There's a trick that somebody in the, the comments is going to point to where you, cr where you create a file in dot, slash Etsy slash x11 slash xorg.com.d or something like that. I've done that and I still have screen tearing. 
So that's my number one complaint right now is screen tearing. I can't get rid of it no matter what I do. And I've tried, like I said, I've tried the two tricks that you're supposed to use in order to get rid of it, and neither one of them work. Uh, I had a hell of a time actually getting PyCon to actually start. Uh, and that turned out to be my problem because I compiled it without any use flags. And if you don't compile it with use flags, you can't use the vsync flag. And I was using the vsync flag, so it was just, it was borked. Once I got it recompiled with the vsync flag and started it in the x, x profile directory instead of my uh, auto start file for DWM, it worked fine, but the screen staring was still there. So honestly, that's my biggest problem right now. If I could get rid of the screen tearing, I'd probably stay right on Gen 2 for a while and do a long-term review of it. But I can't stand the screen tearing. It bugs me. Like, it seriously just pisses me off. I can't get rid of it. The other negative thing I have to say about Gen 2 is that it is complex. Like, it is really complex and there is just a ton of stuff here for you to learn the biggest problem i've had over the last week is learning emerge emerge has a literal shit ton of options and none of them are intuitive and it's not that this is not an emerge problem pacman has the exact same problem like how does pacman dash s capital s equals equal install s like, like s doesn't mean install in any language <laughs> Which, as far as I understand, it, it doesn't make any sense. It emerges the same way. If you don't learn some of the flags, you're kind of going to be very confused, very fast, very often. And even now, a week later, I'm still getting the whole, uh, a hold of what flags you need to use to do things like install stuff, like update the system, like unmask packages, and all this stuff. It's one thing right after another and it's all stuff that you have to learn in order to use the system it's not necessarily a bad thing because i like learning that stuff but i can see how it could be very overwhelming and very frustrating for a lot of people because it was very overwhelming and very frustrating for me now there are, are apparently cheat sheets out there where you can see all this stuff in like a very glanceable way i did not get a chance to take a look at those you know extensively over the last couple days but that's something that I would definitely check out if I, to, if I was going to stay on Gen 2. But I would just say that if you are deciding to try Gen 2, I highly recommend taking notes. It's one thing that I really regret not doing is when the, the fellows were helping me install this stuff, I really wish I had had a notebook here in front of me and I wrote down specifically the stuff about merge that I should have known. Like... Specifically, like, the unmasking of packages. Like, I've finally gotten it down after a week. But there are certain parts of that process that I've had to look up probably ten times. And it's just annoying. Now, if you don't know what unmasking of a package is, don't worry about it. It doesn't really matter. It's just a, a Gen 2 thing. The point is, is that sometimes you have to do this in order to uninstall or order to install stuff. And the process is something that has to be done in a certain order. If, like, you, miss, if you miss a step, it doesn't work. So I've had to look that up several times. So my, I highly recommend as you go through and install this stuff, take notes, especially on the merge stuff. You'll be happy that you did. So Gen 2, honestly, it has been a really good experience. I've, I've been highly impressed with what I've seen of it so far. Now, I can't say anything about gaming. I don't have Steam installed and I don't know whether or not I'm going to make it that far or not. I... Also can't say anything about being able to stream on here because I haven't actually been able to stream on Gen 2 yet. So I don't know whether or not that will work. I will say this. The documentation for Gen 2 is fantastic. If you had to put the Arch Wiki and the Gen 2 Wiki uh, side by side and ask which one's better, I wouldn't be able to tell you. They're both really good. I would say that they're both technological in pros. And by that I mean... If you don't know what some of the words mean, you're going to have a problem. So if you don't have an underlying idea of what you're doing, you're probably going to get confused. And if you're like me, when you get confused reading something like that, you kind of zone out or start skipping stuff. And that's not a good thing. Like in, in Arch, you can kind of get away with it some and sometimes because you can always go backwards. During the install of Gentoo, if you don't do things in order your Gen 2 install is not going to work. So uh, don't be like me in that in that scenario. So the final question that has to be asked is, 
will Gen 2 stay on my system? The answer to that question is eh, probably not. And there are multiple reasons for it. First, I do have to do a long-term review coming up, and I need this hard drive in order to do, to do it. So that's the biggest reason why. The second reason is also equally big, and, and that's the screen tearing. If I could get rid of screen tearing, honestly, I wouldn't mind keeping Gen 2 around for a little while and actually making this the lo next long-term review. But without being able to get rid of that, I can't do it. Like I, I just can't use something that screen tears that bad. One of the things that I do primarily on my computer is read stuff. Like half the time I do work, like my actual job, I'm reading thousands and thousands of words in either Google Docs or some other program or something. And if the screen tears while I'm doing that and I notice it, it takes me out of whatever I'm doing for multiple seconds, maybe even up to a half a, half a minute, where I'm raging in my head, like, why is this doing that? And while it might not bother other people, it bothers me so much that I can't get work done, therefore I can't use Gentoo. That's just kind of the way it is. So if in the next couple days I can fix that screen tearing, Perhaps Gentoo is the next long-term review. If I can't fix it in the next couple days, probably Gentoo is going to get overwritten with Slackware because that was the next long-term review plan. That was what I was planning on doing next. So we'll see how that goes. Would I recommend Gentoo for other people? Hell yeah, I actually would. If you are interested in Linux and you know what you're doing, like if you know what Linux is, how the file structure works and all that stuff, especially if you've installed Arch Linux before, Installing Gen 2 isn't that much more complicated than Arch Linux. It's really not. I would recommend doing it on a computer that has certain specs. A lot of memory, a fairly competent processor so that you're not there forever. Because if you're on really low end, like 10 year old hardware, it's going to take you too long and you're just going to get frustrated. And you're also probably going to burn your house down. Because your, your laptop or whatever is going to get really hot. And uh, it's just not going to be a very good experience. So do it on something modern. And you'll have a good time. And you'll learn a lot. Even if you don't stick with Gen 2. You'll learn a lot along the way. And so I would recommend anybody who's interested in becoming like a Linux diehard. Give this a try. It's actually not that bad. So that is it for this video. If you have comments about this experience. You can leave those comments in the comment section below. I'm sure that there's something else that I was going to talk about that I've just completely forgotten because I didn't take any notes for this video. It's just kind of more of like a ramble. Uh, but I, I will leave those in the comment section below if I if I come up with something else that I've forgotten. I'll leave those down below as well. So if you want to, you can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank the current patrons. Robert Sid, Devon, Patrick, Fred Kramer, Meglin, Jackson, Evan Tool, Steve Ace, Eberger, Linux, Garrick, Samuel, Mitchell, Art Center, J Dog, Carbon Data, Jeremy Sean, Odin, Martin E, Andy Ross, Merrick Camp, Josh Lee, Peter A. Crucible, Dark Bennett, Six, Primus, and PM. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.